Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to create a sense of depth in Adobe Photoshop CS3. The first step is to select the text tool, and we'll create a text of tut spot. Go back to the move tool, move it to the center, and we're going to create a reflection. And so to do this, we're going to right click on the tut spot layer, duplicate the layer, We'll move this down so you can see it a little better. We'll Command T or Control T in Windows, Transform, or you can go to, to the Edit menu and do Transform from here. But once you hit Command T, just right click on the layer once the Transform tools come up around it. And we're going to flip this vertically and press Enter to get out of Transform mode. And now we'll just move this up so it looks more like a reflection. And you can kind of see how this, the reflection layer's P is going up into the normal layer's P. So you're going to right click on the tut spot copy and rasterize the layer. And we'll take the marquee tool and just delete that part of it. Press delete. And that's looking a little better there. Now we're going to go into the blending options. There are a few ways you can do this, but for this tutorial we'll go into the blending options. We're going to create a gradient overlay. And we'll flip that around and make it reverse. And we don't want the white to show up because if we have a colored background, the white will show and it won't look like a real reflection. So we'll select this color and make it 7C, 7C, 7C like our text. Click OK there. And we want to make this color the same. So we have 7C as well. And now for this, we want to make the opacity 0%. So we'll click OK there. And now, I forgot to do this earlier, but go into Blending Options and set the Fill Opacity to 0. And that looks just about good. We can mess around with the opacity of the full layer. Probably make it 50%. That looks about good. And we'll click OK. Now, this is just a pretty generic reflection. So, what we're going to do is Control t again right click and click perspective and what this is going to do is allow us to change the perspective of this so for example if I click and hold on this bottom right hand corner and drag to the right it will kind of give it a sense of depth like it's coming out towards us so once I do that I'll press enter um, depending on what you're looking for you can control T again and just kind of scale it up or scale it down depending on how far away you want to want to make it look but I'll just keep it at the normal and that looks pretty good for the reflection I'll move this to the center a little bit more but now we want to create even more a sense of depth so we'll go to the layers palette and we'll create a new layer behind everything and so I'm going to try and make this look like it's setting on a table. So I'll create this, kind of drag it down a little bit, and we will fill this with a light gray. So let's just go with E0, E0, E0 for the color. Click OK, click OK. It will fill it. If we want to, we can mess around, give it a gradient. So, for example, we could give it that, we could give it that. We'll just make this 50% of the default gradient. And we'll click OK there. And we're, then we're going to create another layer behind this one. And we can just fill this. We don't even need to use the marquee tool. And we'll make this filled with a uh, darker gray. 
So for example, you'd use eight, 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 eight. <laughs> uh, click OK. Click OK. It'll fill it there. And now it doesn't really contrast very well with that, but what we can do to give it more of a sense of depth and to make it contrast a little more is to select a brush. So click on the pencil tool, drag over to brush if it's not already selected. 75% um, opacity, 40% flow, sounds about right. Um, it's a bit big of a brush, we can drag it down here. Maybe about 200. And if you want to, you can use your bracket tools. If you click the right bracket, it'll make your brush tool bigger. The left will do the opposite and make it smaller. This looks about good. And I have black selected as my foreground color. And I'll just click there a couple times. And you see it kind of gives the effect of a shadow of some sort. And we'll go back to our move tool. Now this still looks kind of, it doesn't really contrast very well, so let's just change the color of that. Actually, I don't even need to do a color overlay. Let's go to the text tool. And... Make it a blue of some sort. Make it a little bit more light. That looks good to me. Zero, zero, A, E, F, F. Click OK. Go back to the Move tool. And that looks about good. We'll move this above the reflection gradient because here I'll go back to it under. You can kind of see where the reflection is going over the original text layer. So we'll move this in front of it so now it's not in front of it anymore. And this is pretty much it. We can mess around with the reflection. So just Command or Control T. And we can move it up or something like that. We could add a nice shine to the text. Just create a new layer. Go to the Marquee tool. Select the top half of the text. Go back to the Gradient tool. Select the Default. Switch it around by clicking that and we have the white as the foreground color we'll go up here go foreground to transparent click that and I don't know we can start around here move it just below the text here we go go back to the marquee tool deselect and now there's still a gradient outside of the text so we need to delete that so what we're going to do is command or control click the thumbnail of the text layer and select inverse or shift control I or shift command I on the Mac click that and we have that all everything outside of the text layer selected and make sure you have the layer that you want the shine on the shine to be selected so it doesn't delete something else and so we just click delete and it will take away everything else and that concludes it if you have any questions or comments leave them in the comment section at tootspot.com thanks for watching